Hello everybody. So today I want to talk to you, uh, go back to our project that we started working on uh, in the scope of the Entity Framework. Uh, we want to learn that from scratch. And one of the things that you really have to pay attention to when you're writing software is that you have your software uh, modifiable. So it's very, it's very often that you have your end user having some requirements that actually asks you to change your model, change your database schema. And this is, this is very, very, you know, very possible. It actually happens, you know, most of the time. Your client, your end user, or whoever you work for or making the software for, including yourself, you'll say, huh, I have this new idea and I think I should include that on my software. So your software should be um, more open for uh, change, to open for extensibility, but not you know modifiable in a way that could break your uh, current functionality. And um, I should I should I should make another video sometime about uh, unit tests and how to make sure that every time you add a new feature in your software, you just run the build and the build will just execute all these um, uh, test methods that would actually tell you whether your feature broke your software or not. Uh, but, but, but let's talk about this some other time. What I, what I want to talk to you about conceptually, if you understand the business and you decided to use the .NET framework and the Entity framework as a technology that will actually help you uh, facilitate the business that you're working for, trying to implement, you have to understand how to modify it. Yes, we understood CRUD, create, retrieve, update, delete uh, functionality with the entity framework, but what if your, your end user came out and said, okay, you've made this program for a school and you want to add the date of birth for a student, for example. So let's go to our model here and let's try it. Let's see what that does. So I'm going to make a new property here. I'm going to call it, it's going to be date time. I'm going to call it date of birth. All right, so I have a date of birth. And this date of birth is basically a new property that should be associated with every student that you have. So if we create a new student, this new student should, um, this new uh, object of the student should allow you to put their date of birth. So let's let's put their date of birth here. Let's say it's a new uh, date time, date time, and let's say the date time. Let's put the year 1985, month nine, day set 27, and let's try to add this guy. So let's add my brother then. I'm just gonna add my brother here. So Hussein Habib. So if I if I uh, run my application right now, what happens? The whole thing falls apart because what it says is that that your model uh, with your database student database context has changed since the database was created. So this is not the model that actually corresponds correctly to the database. So this is not this is not cool. This is not going to work. What we need to do is that we need to enable the migration. So we need to make the entity framework handles all these changes of models without any loss of data. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the tools. We're going to go to the NuGet manager and God forbid you're going to have to type some command line. You shouldn't freak out from it because this is a pretty friendly command line. It should allow you to have some sort of um, autocomplete and uh, IntelliSense at some point. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to enable migration. So we're going to go ahead and say enable migrations for this particular project. And you probably have noticed it created a um, a folder with some configuration. And it created also um, an initial create that actually has your stu current student table in here. So that's your initial create. So that means that if you made a change in the model that caused a change in the database, and then you decided to roll back, you can go back to the initial create. 
That's how intelligent it is. So as much as you should think about modifying or changing your software, you should only have a plan to roll back once things fall apart. Otherwise, listen, software engineering is about, you know, thinking back and forth. So what happens, it's a lot of F statements and possibilities, and you just try to uh, limit all these possibilities in the scope of what is very likely possible to happen. Otherwise, if we're going to talk academically and mathematically, there are infinite, infinite numbers of possibilities that, that could happen to your software in terms of changing and modification. Um, so what you do is you, you, just, you just try to sum that up and get the most likely changes to happen to your software. So, okay, let's go back to the code. Stop talking about <laughs> theoretical stuff. Um, so we enabled migration. So now we have these two files. We have an initial migration that has a time. If you look at my time, it has a time. It has everything here done here uh, that allows you to understand, you know, when this initial create was actually initiated. What we're going to do next is that we're going to, now that we added the date of birth, I'm going to add a new migration. So I'm going to go and say add migration. And then let's call it something that's user friendly. So added date of birth to student model. So this is basically my migration. I'm going to add this migration. So what it did is it created a new migration with the name that you have chosen, with a date. And this new name tells you basically um, what's going to happen. It's going to upgrade your table to this level. And that value is not a null. And it will, it will, um, it will, it will deploy this piece to the table. So what's going to happen now is that your table, let's take a quick look at our table um, here. How our table looks like right now is that the students table have the date of birth created for you in the designer mode. Yes, so that's that's what I was looking for. In the designer mode, you don't have the date of birth in here. Right? If you go to the data mode, that's probably from a previous uh, what you saw is just something was cached, so that was wrong. So in the designer mode, you don't have the date of birth yet. What do you need to do now? Okay, so you, so you enabled the migrations. You added a new migration. Now the last thing is just to update your database, and you're done. Date database, like this. Now if I refresh my model like this, Sorry, I have to run my application first. So if I run my application, it will accept my new changes. Now if I go and update my, my data like, like this, let's see. Let's close this guy. It's still cached. Let's go to my designer. It added the date of birth right here. Now let's go to the data. And here's the date of birth. And because it's not null, it will manage just to put a default value, which is 1-1-1900. I'm pretty sure I wasn't born at this time. I'm not that old. Uh, so so that's that's it. That's the whole thing. You basically you updated your model and you made that correspond automatically to your database. That's all. That's the whole thing. And you know you would you would ask what if I needed more models to be added? So if you need to add more models, you're just gonna have to add uh, the database context uh, database sit of your new model and just make sure it's in the same class that we talked about in our first video in Intuitive Framework and that's about it. That's all you need from, from this perspective but there is still more issues like for example you would ask me what if you wanted to make the date time nullable like that. Just by doing that that means it's nullable or you could also do that. Is it nullable like that? You know there is no like uh, right or wrong way to do it. You can do it either ways. It's up to you. So if you want to do it nullable like that, let's let's try and see if our 
uh, database model can respond to them. I'm not pretty sure. Let's 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 test that together. Whoa! It's freaking out on me now. I have a lot of things running. It should uh, come back to life sometime very soon. There it is with 32 gigabit of memory. <laughs> I was hoping that it wouldn't do that, but it would. But it did. So let's go to our uh, our uh, uh, package console manager. Let's clear the air here. That's a pretty much you know obvious command. Let's try to add a new migration. Add migration. Let's say nullified date of birth. Let's see how that works. Ah, see now what happened. So now we have this new change and it will drop this guy and put this guy in so now it's 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 possible to be uh, to be nullable because that's that's okay this guy is the change that says that this guy can't be null so now it's null so let's update our database let's run uh, Let's run a code without the date of birth. Let's put some guy here. Let's put Chris Williams. Like that. And let's run our code. Okay. It updated the database. Let's go to the data and refresh. And here's Chris Williams. No. So there are there are these little uh, annotations that you can use, but most importantly, what I want you to, to learn here, what I want you to, to pay attention to here is that your software, you have to understand the first thing you learn about a new technology is that how you actually can take control of it and actually make sure that you can make your technology more flexible and more correspondent to uh, the changing forever changing requirements and trust me you know changing requirements means that you're still in business you actually still can make money if you're good at it if you know how to manage yourself because unfortunately maybe some developers will just think that this is a piece of requirement what you really need to do is that to agree with the end user on spe specific requirements they need and anything else that gets added to that, you get to charge them more if you are the guy that owns the software. Otherwise, you just do your job. So that's about it. I appreciate watching this video. Um, type a comment down there if you have any questions. Um, I, I don't think this, this project is really worth it to, to upload to a uh, GitHub or anything. But during the time of this video, I just finished like a simple uh, web API 2 project which allows you to find all the cities that are in the radius range of a specific city. It's called Visitora. Go to my GitHub. Uh, you can find the link on my channel and check it out. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a beautiful day.